Hello, good evening. Uh, Julian and Jay, please start with giving 30 seconds opening statements for this debate. Jay, could you please start? Hi, I'm uh, Elizabeth J. Edivane, and I'm a veteran of the academic rep uh, world. And because of that, I've got a lot of experience and I know the areas that we need to close in on, such as investigating areas where lecture, the lecture format isn't working and utilising new technology to revolutionise that and lowering the cost of your education here at York. Okay, that was almost, almost perfect timing. And now, Julian, now your turn. Hi, I'm Julian Porch. Please call me JP. I okay. much okay. prefer it. Uh, oh, no, that was, that was a general. That was a general call. And I'm running to be academic officer this year because I've seen amazing changes in academic departments over my time at York. And I want to represent students' interests to ensure they're getting the best possible educational gain in the best environment that we can create for them here at York. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. So the first question will be a bit just to clash you and just to get the debate spirit in you ju just right. So why are you a better candidate to represent students? JP? Ooh, um, I am new to USU, so I'm totally new to student politics. And I believe that what I can bring to the table in that regard is a fresh face and a new perspective and a new way of finding ways to implement students' desires and wishes. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, listening to the wants and needs of students for my entire time at York here, um, more recently two years as a department rep, and that gives me a lot of experience knowing what the issues are currently, also how to get how to change them, which is an undervalued skill because it isn't easy getting into a new system. I know how it works and I know what needs changing, and I've also got that um, wealth of experience listening to students and en enacting immediate change in my department and throughout the university, so that's why I'm the better candidate. So how do you think that are the, what the other person said, is it irrelevant or is it just less relevant? How, how do you think that it's it really, how can you really convince the, the students to do it? Uh, no, I think Jay's experience is extremely relevant to uh, the role of academic officer. I think having that experience directly working with students and course reps uh, and department reps is extremely relevant to the position. However? However, I think that if anything, this year has shown us that there's a real disenchantment with politics, student politics uh, in particular. And I think that there are ways and means whereby we can be constrained by the systems that we find ourselves in. And that a way to circumvent this is by getting new blood and new ideas. Mm -hmm. Jay, how do you respond um, to that? I, I think there's a lot of merit to get getting fresh ideas, but I would say that we get those fresh ideas from students every day, you know, engaged students and going out and actively engaging new students. Um, I'd also like to say that, um, you know, you mentioned student politics there, wouldn't say academic representation is massively like a student politics thing. I myself haven't been in the forefront of anything apart from maybe the, the last month. And I think, again, I was very active in the NSS referendum. That's something that shows, you know, I'm not afraid to kind of go against some of the things that, um, that uh, some people at UC maybe want because I have the academic interests of students at heart. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, you get engaged with students. However, we see that students are a bit passive lately mm -hmm. and they do not really get engaged that much with life at uni. How can you change it? How can you reach out to students? Um, so one thing that I'm really keen on is one-on-one -on -one engagement because you get an email around, you see a flyer, you're not likely to you know, properly go and investigate that and follow it yourself. Um, so I'd like to meet more personally with course reps. It's been something that previous academic officers have tried to do, but they've never actually actively followed it properly. Um, and I think by motivating course reps to then go on and take that one-on-one -on -one representation to their cohort, it's how I manage my department. It works very well. We have an incredibly good system there. Um, and it's how I know several other department reps run their departments. Um, and then also through immediate feedback schemes. So things like we've got the rate your um, lecture. Once you've got that kind of people know that they're being listened to, they are more likely to then follow the secondary routes of kind of flyers, etc. I'd like to see that more... Um, more widespread um especially with the weight real contact hour schemes because i think it's the time you can get immediate feedback from you know what's mm -hmm. wrong right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jb what do you have to say to that i think that students aren't going to come to you you have to go to them and i absolutely agree with jay when she says that it's about one-on-one -on -one engagement i think the most valuable way we can engage students is in person in real time and just having conversations with them because that's the way 
you get to really know their wishes because they will tell you if you're an open and friendly person and you're genuinely asking about them, about their experiences and about their ideas and their concerns because there's only so much that a feedback form or an email, as Jay said, can represent students' interests. And of course, when that's not really being monitored, you know, you're hiding away behind closed curtains, filling mm -hmm. in a feedback form on your laptop, there's not really a... There's not really a way uh, where students... No, I'll rephrase that. There's not really the impetus to be really honest, to really get across your concerns mm -hmm. and ideas. So why people should vote for you, JP, if Jay already said that she has experience in it? Because I believe that I am very in touch with the needs and students of York. I think that I'm fairly representative of the vox populi. Maybe I've just disproved my point by saying that in Latin. Um... And I, th I think I'm a really approachable person. I think that I'm, a I'm someone who you can have a conversation with. And I like to believe that skill would be extremely useful in the role of academic officer when it comes to going out to students and finding out what their opinions are and finding out what they think needs improving and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to my next question. What are you both studying? What are your degrees? I'm studying theatre, writing, directing and performance, which is a lot of words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm studying English and related literature. How can you ensure that you all represent all students, so including science students, electronic students, engineering students? Mm -hmm. How are you sure that you can actually understand their needs? This has been one of my concerns and was when I was uh, drawing up my manifesto, which you can all read online. Uh, and I contacted a number of people, many department reps. I spoke to a lot of people on courses outside of the humanities and in the social sciences and the sciences. And I, I I got to know quite a lot about the needs and wishes and also the goings on of uh, specific departments. And one thing that I was particularly taken with, and this is a point in my manifesto, is the Athena Swan Initiative, which has been worked, uh, which is running at York. I believe that York is uh, the best, if one, if not one of the best universities, in at least in the Russell Group, in terms of Athena Swan. We hold two gold awards, which I don't think any other does, in the biology and chemistry departments. And my point is essentially I want to further that initiative. Uh, so for those mm -hmm. who are listening at home or not at home, the Athena Swan Initiative is an initiative which promotes gender equality in STEM uh, subjects, but mm -hmm. also recently arts, humanities, social sciences, and business and management. Um, and okay. what I want to do... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. No, okay, so now it's... I'm sorry, but it's, it's Jay's turn now. Um, okay, so uh, in TFTV, um, for anyone that doesn't know, we have three very distinct programs, so I've had to go to grips in like intensely with how they work um, there's two BSCs I'm obviously on a BA uh, and that's a lot of um, that's given me experience in really adapting to how different things work it's an incredibly diverse department but furthermore I've, uh, I've worked on the uh, team of department reps and faculty reps across um, all departments for the last two years I work closely with in different working groups with people from different departments I know more about how their departments work and I know how to utilize that um, that team work very well I've seen it managed twice now uh, I've got some fresh ideas I got some ways that I know works uh, so I think that is really key the support team of the department reps um, is absolutely tantamount to a good academic officer I helped run the recruitment campaign last year for it and we got a full um, a full team again uh, for the second year running and uh, yeah so that's one of the ways that I'd make sure that my uh, personal skills in being able to manage all of those different kinds of areas are being met to the specific needs of each department yes but at the same time there are no faculty reps running this year in this turn of election so does it mean that you should fail do we really need faculty reps we absolutely need faculty reps. Um, I I will say quite brashly that we have let down recruitment on faculty reps this year. Um, and it's something that would be one of my first things. If we can't get them filled this year, it'd be the start of next year. Absolutely need those positions filled. Um, they're completely paramount to the success of the university and representation in the university. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, yeah, uh, it's one of the things I'd be looking out for is when we're doing uh, recruitment for department reps, just making sure that we're putting that much attention again into the faculty reps, because the year before we actually had quite every single position was contested um, and you two have dropped the ball on this one. Okay, and now to moving to something completely different. How can you define the role of uni in people's lives? So is it mostly to get a degree or is it to get transferable skills and just experience in how to live life in general? I think it's a 
a crux of all three. So if it's a Venn diagram, we're definitely in the intersection here. People come, for uni uh, come to university for all sorts of different reasons. First, obviously, is the inherent value in their degree, whatever they're studying. And second, obviously, is the lifestyle and uh, getting away from home and just learning. It's like, a, it's like I like to think of it as like a trial period to adulthood, right? You get the first three years for free. Um, and then as also, as you say, the transferable skills, which can be used then to go on to uh, gain employment. Uh, and I think instead of focusing on any one particular aspect, I do have to think, uh, I do have to say that we must consider all aspects uh, holistically. Mm -hmm. And Jay, what do you think? I'm largely in agreement with JP there. I think he's made a very valid point. Um, you know, there is no heterotopia like the university, but I would say that um, there's a reason that we have different roles. You know, we have a well-being officer and we have an academic officer. Um, and so what I'm concerned with predominantly is academia within a context of well-being, within a context of, you know, um, the larger life, university life. And I do think transferable skills are part of that academia. Um, so, yeah, while I do think it's completely mixed thing, there's a reason why this is a very important role that needs its own, you know, um, field. Mm -hmm. Should the university push for students to get more involved with the societies or should, should it just keep to pushing just for the academic skills? Jay? Um, I uh, I think there shouldn't be a push for it because I think, you know, there's quite a good level of uh, society engagement. I don't know many people who are engaged with no society at all. Um, and, you get, you know, you get those skills from anything. You could go to see maybe a musical once a year at the societies. You know, that's engagement, that's culture, that's something that you're absorbing. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're doing that or, you know, if you're a presenter on URY, if you're really involved. Um, I don't think that that's something the university necessarily needs to... Um, needs to engage itself with because we have an activities officer to make sure that you know they're getting everything that they need. Mm -hmm. JP what do you think um, about it? I largely agree with Jay on this matter I think that it's not particularly the university's remit to encourage activities outside of learning and, and teaching and that is exactly why we have uh, the role of acad uh, not academic officer activities officer in USU I believe that the impetus is the onus rather is largely on the student but that has to be facilitated by the union that has to be made more accessible and i think that is what many of the activities or prospective activities officers are running on uh, today mm -hmm. and the i think the last question would be uh if you could steal one idea from your opponent which one would it be if i could steal one idea from jay's uh manifesto it would definitely be to implement uh de more departmental book fairs secondhand book fairs so that students have access to uh, second-hand books and materials without having to uh, spend a lot of money, without having to increase uh, their cost of education. And uh, also, I think it promotes a sense of community. Uh, there's, uh, not necessarily the, the passing on of ancient tomes in a, in a literary way, but I think just in having a collective together of a day where you're all as a community celebrating your subject together, I think that's a really important thing. Mm -hmm. And Jay, how about you? Slight cop out because it's a very similar policy. It's uh, JP's idea of um, having departments have reserves of books uh, that are available, uh, especially to students on the York bursary. As a student on the York bursary, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Um, however, like the reason that I've chosen to put my policy forward as a, as a different variant of that is because I'm, I'm not sure that there's actually the remit to do that right now. Um, but I do. I really like the ethos behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you could convince uh, the voters, like how, what what experience do you have, and what's the most important thing, were your experience from uni, that just convinced you that you should run for academic officer? Oh God, this has been. It sounds so sad. My entire life has been building up to this moment because I started academic representation when I was eleven. Um, but <laughs> I suppose it would have been um, when I was just starting out as a department rep. And uh, my department were quite, some members of my department were quite resistant to getting in lecture capture. Um, and they listened to my personal pleas as a disabled student um, for why it's a good idea. They really engaged with me and it was just opening up that dialogue. And I saw such a massive difference for students like me and all students in my department. And that's why I wanted to make that kind of change throughout the university. Mm -hmm. And JP, how about you? 
So my current job actually is something of a marketing role. And essentially what it's all about is reaching, pe- reaching out to people and engaging with them and interacting with them. During my time at university, I've tutored people and devised curriculae, and that's something that's really important to me. The academic needs of the students here at York are absolutely paramount to me, and I want to represent their voices and ideas and concerns within that. Yes, so thank you so much for coming here. Any last words? Just one word to convince everyone to vote for you? Experience. Personality. <laughs>